Antarctica's doomsday glacier, how its collapse could trigger global floods and swallow islands. This is by Ella Gilbert, postdoctoral researcher, associate climate science, University of Reading, on the conversation. The massive Thwaites Glacier in West Antarctica contains enough ice to raise global sea levels by 65 centimeters. And if it were to completely collapse, that's about a foot and a half. And worryingly, recent research research suggests that its long-term stability is doubtful as the glacier hemorrhages more and more ice. Now, we know on West Antarctica, we have a number of uh, volcanoes. We know that Antarctica had 47 volcanoes, and recently another 100 have been discovered. And some areas here are as large as Yellowstone supervolcano capacity. So Western, as you can see from the map coming up soon, the Western area has a lot of volcanoes. Now, could this be what is also triggering the melt of it from underneath the ice? So adding 65 centimeters to global sea levels would be coastline changing amounts. For context, there's been about 20 centimeters of sea level rise since 1900, an amount that is already forcing coastal communities out of their homes and exacerbating environmental problems such as flooding, saltwater contamination, and habitat loss. But the worry is that Thwaites Glacier, sometimes called the Doomsday Glacier, because of its keystone role in the region, might not be the only glacier to go. Were it to empty into the ocean, it could trigger a regional chain reaction and also drag other nearby glaciers with, in with it, which would mean several meters of sea level rise. That's because the glaciers in West Antarctica are thought to be vulnerable to a mechanism called marine ice shelf instability, or MICI, where retreating ice exposes increasingly tall, unstable ice cliffs that collapse into the ocean. And here we have the western area, as you can see, the volcanoes on that area. And this is where the uh, Thwaites Glacier located could be, of course, impacting sea level rise. Finally support my Patreon accounts. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box. And this is one of the uh, very active Antarctica volcanoes. This is Mount Erebus, smoking as we can see. Now, the sea level rise of several meters would inundate many of the world's major cities, including Shanghai, New York, Miami, Tokyo, Mumbai, of course, all of Delaware, uh, New Jersey, all these coasts would be inundated. It would also cover huge swaths of land in coastal regions and largely swallow up low-lying island nations like Kiribati, Tuvalu, and the Maldives. So this is as big as Britain this Thwaites Glacier in the Admonson Sea embayment. Thwaites is a frozen river of ice approximately the size of Great Britain. It already contributes about 4% of the global sea level rise. Since the year 200, the glacier has had a net loss of more than 1,000 billion tons of ice, and this has increased steadily over the last three decades. The speed of its flow has doubled in 30 years. Meanwhile, twice as much ice is being spewed into the ocean as in the 1990s. Thwaites Glacier, the widest in the world at 80 meters wide, is held back by a floating platform of ice called an ice shelf, which restrains the glacier and makes it flow less quickly. But scientists have just confirmed that this ice shelf is becoming rapidly destabilized. The eastern ice shelf now has cracks crisscrossing its surface, and could collapse within 10 years, according to Aaron Petit, glaciologist at Oregon State University. This work supports research published in 2020, which also noted the development of cracks and crevasses on the Thwaites ice shelf, and these indicate that it's being structurally weakened. This damage can have a reinforcing feedback. The effect, because of cracking and fracturing, can promote further weakening priming the ice shelf for disintegration. So if Thwaites' ice shelf did collapse, 
it would spell the beginning of the end for the glacier, and without its ice shelf, Thwaites Glacier would discharge all its ice into the ocean over the following decades to centuries. Other unstable glaciers. The ice shelf, which can be thought of as a floating extension of Thwaites Glacier, is one of several that scientists are watching closely in the Amundsen Sea Basin, West Antarctica. Several ice shelves that hold back glaciers there, including Thwaites and its next door neighbor, the Pine Island Glacier, are being eroded by rising ocean's temperatures. Warmer ocean water is, is able to undercut these floating ice shelves, driving melting from below, and can thin the ice and weaken it, allowing the cracks and fractures that have been observed at the surface to develop. This ocean-driven melting at the bottom of the ice shelf also pushes the anchoring point where the ice melts the seabed backwards. And because the seabed sloped downwards in the Admonton Sea, that could eventually trigger a shift in the glacier's loss and lose their footing and retreat rapidly. Ultimately, if the ice shelves retreat, it means there is less holding the West Antarctic glaciers back, allowing them to accelerate and add more to global sea levels. However, scientists are still getting to grips with the MICI and questions remain about the future of West Antarctica glaciers. While the collapse of Thwaites certainly could trigger a wholesale collapse event, not everyone believes this will happen. Other work suggests that the stabilization of the Thwaites ice shelf and glacier may not lead to the kind of catastrophic outcomes that some fear. Sea ice and chunks of ice that break away from the collapsing ice shelf and glacier might have a similar restraining effect to the in intact ice shelf nipping the chain reaction in the butt, in the butt bud and preventing the sustained collapse of the entire West Antarctic ice sheet. But while uncertainty remains about exactly what will happen in West Antarctica, one thing is for sure, the retreating Thwaites Glacier will continue to add to global sea levels for many years to come. And this is on the Conversation Creative Commons by Ella Gilbert, Postdoctoral Research Associate, Climate Science, University of Reading in the UK. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. West Antarctica ice sheets, glaciers emptying into the Admonson Sea, and together they contain enough ice to raise global sea level by almost four feet. We've focused more on this particular sector of West Antarctica because this is where we see the Waste Glacier, Pine Island Glacier, as we said. And this is what uh, we are observing in the changes. Pine Island Glacier breaking off, as you can see. These are the cracks. Haynes Glacier, Pope Glacier, Smith Glacier, Kohler Glacier. And that's the location of it right there, as you can see, Pine Island Glacier. Grounding line, floating ice, warmer water underneath, cooler water on top, and it's circulating. As you can see, the floating ice is getting very thin. The warmer water eating away at the bottom of the glacier. Now, as we said before, there are most of the newly found volcanoes are on the west and it could be that uh, they're also playing a part in what's happening in the melting at the grounding line and here we see the aerial view of the cracks of it and here we go again Now, I'll leave a link below for the uh, Western Antarctica ice sheet for you. 
volcanoes. In 2017, geologists from Edinburgh University discovered 91 volcanoes located two kilometers below the ice surface, making it the largest volcanic region on Earth. Okay, so east, uh, Western Antarctica is known as the largest volcanic region on Earth because of the 91 additional volcanoes two kilometers below the ice surface. So obviously this could be a very large factor as to why the glaciers of Antarctica, especially in the West, are melting. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.